In this tutorial and the tutorials to follow, I'll be showing you how to take advantage of some of the more advanced features available in Ableton in order to create any kind of drum sound you may be looking for. For now, let's have a look at what's going on here with the drums. The first thing that you may notice here is that some of these tracks are blue. So why are these tracks blue? Well, they're frozen. Unfortunately, this computer here is not the fastest computer in the world. So what you end up having to do in Ableton in order to not get so many audio dropouts is freeze your tracks when you have all kinds of stuff going on. For instance, on this track here, you can clearly see there's all kinds of stuff going on. Unfortunately, if your computer doesn't isn't the fastest thing in the world, it just isn't going to be able to do everything without freezing these tracks. So basically when you freeze a track, is it records the audio then it just plays the audio back with all the modulation. You can't edit anything when a track is frozen. You have to unfreeze it. Freeze and unfreeze tracks. You just right click, unfreeze, right click again, and it freezes. One other important thing to note about frozen tracks is that frozen tracks cannot contain any virtual instruments or any effects that receive information externally, for instance. I have here an artillery. If I drag this artillery directly into the drum track, artillery is an effect that generates uh, skips, glitches, does all kinds of effects, and uh, it needs to receive MIDI information in order to work. This track down here actually sends the MIDI information up to the artillery VST. So let's see what happens if I try to freeze this track now that it has a VST effect on it that is receiving MIDI information from an external track. So you see, this drum track is in a group, but it's in a group by itself. The reason is as I need to have it in a shell in order to be able to use artillery with it and freeze the track. So artillery's back there. For now I'm going to unfreeze this track here. And I'm going to go ahead and deactivate everything except for the drum. I'm going to leave these artillery triggers activated because uh, one of those triggers actually modulates the drums. So let's see what we got going on here as far as the drums. some audio dropouts there. Hang on just a second. And this is a trick that you should be able to do. You open up your task manager, right click on Live 8, set your priority to high. Sometimes this can help with latencies. Okay, so let's have a look under the hood here. The 
first effect I have here in the chain is called the MIDI effect velocity. Um, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'll go into this into greater detail in later tutorial, but um, basically what I use this for here is to provide a little bit of humanization to the drumming. Um, you set this random knob here, the velocity values go any from anywhere from 0 to 127. Um, depending on the incoming velocity, this will alter the velocity by a maximum of 15 uh, values. So it'll either bring the velocity up by 15 or down by 15 or anywhere in the middle. Um, just makes it sound a little bit more human-like. Here, here we have a drum shell. Now the reason I have a drum shell here um, these are the actual drum samples, or the actual drumming instruments, but the reason I have a drum shell here is so that I can macro the effects and have the effects uh, control every instrument. Without this shell here, I won't be able to create macros for any effects that will affect everything that's in this drum rack here. So, for instance, um, this EQ8 here, this is just a custom filter cut off. And I'll explain how um, this is achieved in a later tutorial as well. But basically, this would not be possible to create this filter effect and have it affect all the instruments without the shell. Next thing we have here in the chain, I'm um, just going to give you a brief overview of what it does. Uh, this affects the clap velocity. Um, just a quick note, velocity is going to affect the actual volume of the instrument. Um, they affect the incoming MIDI note velocity of the instrument. So it basically it'll just trigger different samples depending on the sampler that's used. Uh, for instance, the Dick Trump's a really good sampler. And uh, depending on the incoming velocity, it'll change the sound rather drastically. So basically how this works is... Um, we have this key map here. And on D1 here as well as E0 through F sharp 0, I've got a velocity effect. And the rest of these don't have any effect. It's a drop MIDI effect here. Um, the reason I have it just for these keys is because these are the only keys that are used to send a MIDI signal for a clap sound. So with it set up, when I turn this knob, it increases the uh, outgoing velocity, the maximum outgoing velocity. When it's all the way down, the maximum velocity is a, a zero. So there's absolutely no velocity. Then as it goes up, the maximum velocity that's allowed for the claps increases. And I have one of those on each of these. Turn the knob, change that. All right, the next thing that we have here is addictive drum. Addictive Drums is really a great drum sampler. It just has a bunch of different kits. All multi-sampled. They sound really good. This is just a custom drum kit that I, I created off of a preset, which I would definitely recommend doing with a lot of the instruments. sound pretty good, but then if you want to customize them, make your own. Um, basically what I did with this one was the boom room, I changed the hi-hat to an electronic hi-hat, and I added a clap to the extra and I also EQ'd the kick drum a little bit, so it was a little tighter. But I'll go into this into greater detail. Uh, later tutorial, I'm going to build this rack from scratch for you, and uh, show you exactly what you have to do to make it sound exactly the way you want it to. Next here we have uh, extra samples, and this is just a drum rack. And inside this drum rack is just a bunch of kicks and clap sounds. Again, trigger them just by clicking on the play button. So, as you can see here, this rack is uh, get pretty big. Different kick drum. Here's that EQ8. This is just another um, low pass filter because uh, for these kick drums, 
make it sound a little tighter. This is a D82 Sonic Maximizer. Just make it sound fuller, a little thicker. Show you without it. You read into what these things actually do, they uh, take harmonic frequencies and um, they don't necessarily end out of your speakers at the same time. You have to line up the harmonic frequencies and uh, make it all line up for you when it comes out of your speaker. This is an auto pan. All it does is just automatically pan stuff. You'll be able to hear it here. That's the modulated effect. See the knobs are moving on it. This is a saturator, just applies a low amount of distortion, just make it sound a little cooler. This is an additional uh, high pass filter with a notch for the lower frequency. And the very last thing in the chain we have here is a limiter. And this is just basically uh, any time a frequency goes up past a certain threshold, there's no point in it, clips it, pipe it down a little bit.